Well, the tree is up, the Christmas jumpers are on, and there has been a substitution. Don't worry. He's not put in a transfer request. We haven't sold him, but we have got a super sub. Yes, Ricky Lambert not with us today, but Southampton legend. Franny Benali is. Looking very Christmassy as well, Fran. Well, thank you, mate. It's, uh, it's one goal-scoring machine for another. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe well, not. <laughs> you have actually been mentioned on Laporte a couple of times because I think it was our first episode and your good friend next year, Mr. Latiz, put in a, uh, a text to you saying he was doing the jungle. What, what, what should he do? And you were very excited. Oh, well, I saw it come through and, and, and Matt probably, as he knows only too well, I'm maybe not always the quickest at responding, but... I saw that and I was like, wow, that is amazing. So it was like, yeah, do it. You've got to do it. He would have been all right in there, wouldn't he? Oh, it'd be great for it. Mind you, you're not so keen on maybe the, the eating challenges. I think that's probably what you'd do. Yeah, he'd be better at that than me. Are you excited about this episode? You're, you're very festive, Matt. I mean, you're the only one here who's put a hat on. <laughs> I love Christmas. Yeah. How do you tell? I've got a great collection of Christmas jumpers at home. It embarrasses my daughter when I drop her off to school with a different one on. What, nice. what would be your, your jumper of choice and what's your number one? Oh, like, uh, I know it's like a favourite goal. It's difficult, but come on. It, it is, but I've got I've got one with a big Christmas picture on it, and it just in big white letters it just says "Tis the season to get smashed." Oh, why on earth you're not wearing that today? I know. Yeah, well, nobody warned me. You look very nice anyway. You both. Do. I've got, got this one at home, by the way. This is I, I, I've had, and that one. You said you got this one as well. <laughs> I've got a hell of a collection. Yeah, I've got that one. I've got this one. Well, yeah, just to put a description in. Franny's wearing a nice red number, obviously the, the Saints colours. Red and Green white, yeah. tree on. And you've got the ball. Have they got any tassels in them? No. There's no, there's no little jingles to them. You're in just snowballs on the end of the, the tree. Look very nice. And Matt is wearing what well, only can be described as, what, like a gnome-like hat with tassels on it and fluffy bits. But your jumper has got a snowman on it with it, an actual Southampton scarf. And you've got the logo. Got to have the crest on it. You know what I mean? With, with nice little scarf. Got my, my, my grey jeans. jeans on to match. It looks like a Christmas onesie. It does. <laughs> For those watching on the internet, it is a onesie. Joined by another Saints legend. You said earlier, don't call me a ledge, but you are a ledge. Yeah, um, it's something I'm not normally very comfortable with, especially in the company of these two. Well, hang on, hang on. Ten years at the hey, club. Listen, 301 yeah. appearances, yeah? Roughly, you get to have a, if you get to have a testimonial, do you know what I mean? That, yeah. That's pretty good qualification. Of course it is Kelvin he, Davis, he by the way. Testimonial. Kelvin, we've not even introduced you yet. <laughs> Sorry. Of course. For those who don't recognise your voice or are watching, it is Kelvin Davis. Thank Super. you. Super. Super Kelv. Super Kelv. Thanks for having me. I'll tell you what you are, though, around the club, and I hear this from a lot of people, a huge character. I mean, as a player, now on the coaching staff, people love having you around. Um, I sp <laughs> well, <laughs> how do you answer that? Yeah, I don't know. Um, Just take it. Yeah, no we don't one, often no give compliments out. No one's ever told me that. Um, you must know that. I think I enjoy, I suppose, everywhere I go, I, I try to enjoy myself and, and try to be myself. And I think one thing, uh, I think, when you have been somewhere a long time, uh, which I think my time constitutes being anywhere for a long time now, <laughs> um, I think people get to know you, the real you, you know, you, you can't, there's no acting, you know, but once you've been at a place for a certain amount of, of time, you kind of, obviously the first two or three years, you can... But tend to be a certain type you can of certain blag it. way and <laughs> blag it a little bit. And I think over time, people recognise you for, for what you are. And I'd, I'd like to think that, um, you know, it's probably one of the reasons why I've, I've stuck around. I've certainly enjoyed myself and try to enjoy myself as much as I can. Well, it's our Christmas special show. So you're obviously special in our eyes. That's why you're here. We're not Thank saying you. you need to dish a dirt, but we do want to know all about Christmas parties as a player and now obviously, obviously coaching staff. Do you have to be, behave yourself at the Christmas do now? There's certainly, uh, yeah, I certainly have that little switch in my head that tells me, you know, just just don't boo when the chairman stands up and, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. There's a certain amount of uh, so decorum I'm supposed to uh, supposed to adhere to. Um, but, and ultimately, <laughs> you know, you get a little bit older, you're, you're not quite as uh, lively as you used Childish. to be. Yeah, it's a word I think well, you're looking for. That is a word. That is a <laughs> word. Something that possibly could be linked with my, my character on certain times. But, uh, yeah, I think it's different in my position now. Um, and, again, I think it's different when you become the manager as well. I think that's uh, that's where you, everyone's eyes are on and you can still get away with it. Well, what's your take on Christmas parties in this day and age? Uh, club dues? Or no, players. players. Um, I think it's difficult. I think we, we, you know, us sitting here in front of cameras and, and talking about Christmas dues is, expresses a little bit of, of what 
the media content is out there now and certainly social media and how difficult it is for players. Now, I know some people and maybe not everyone would sympathise with, with them having problems, if you like. Um, obviously, it's a fantastic job and when we played, it was a fantastic job. I think the, um, the difference now is um, everybody seems to know who you are, uh, wherever you go, whatever you're doing. Um, mm. And ultimately, um, I think you are you are constantly on show, and you're constantly got a role to do whilst yeah. you're in that position. And, and I think that's the difference. It's you know, in our day, without the landscape has changed, has not it? Yeah, I think I think that's changed. I think that, I think that's fair. And obviously, there was times when you'd still have people say, "Look, you can't be doing this, you can't be doing that," um, which is right. Um, but I would say that the the criticism that came over players was different um, than, than possibly it is now. I mm. suppose, Franny, the difference back in your day, with all due respect, is like it's different getting someone taking to your side, a teammate or a member of staff saying, listen, a couple of people are watching, behave. Now, with social media, you mess about at the Christmas party, you do something you shouldn't do, it's likely to be oh. all over the net and in the papers. I mean, it's the case year round, though, isn't it? It's, it's not just the Christmas party, but you're right, mm. you know, with, with mobile phones, I mean, blimey, when early days of our career, you know, there, there was no such thing as a mobile phone in the early days or internet and stuff <laughs> like that. So, you know, technology is raced on and it's not always in a positive way. So, yeah, you've got to be very much mindful as a, a player uh, that, you know, even forgetting the technology now, you know, you've still got to re represent yourself, your club uh, there is in, a positive in a positive side way. as well, because I think one of the criticisms that I think came about with, with football is as the scale of the job exploded and, and the finances came into the game I think there was a big distance between players and, and the fans mm -hmm. and I think that's narrowed the gap with social media because it's a you know you can have a direct link you know someone can send me a message on Instagram and I can answer it if I want to mm. you know and I think that that's mm. the positive side but obviously with that comes responsibility as well I think that that's you know the, the, the balance in it it's always the balance definitely and, yeah. and people make mistakes you know and that's that happens as well. The, you know, players are young men. Yep. They do and can make mistakes. And the, 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 you know, the point you're making there, the, the problem is or the issue is that it's for everyone to see. So, lads, take us back then. I'll start with you, Matt. Back in the day, no mobile phones, no cameras out. Christmas do. Let your hair down. Without incriminating yourself or your teammates next year, how bad <laughs> did it get or how good did it get? No, I mean, the, the, the Christmas parties were... Uh, fun. I mean, people talk about the, the fancy dress ones that they do now, but we were doing that 30 years ago. I remember one uh, Christmas party, we turned up uh, dressed as the same bloke uh, at a fancy dress. But, remember but, that? But different but characters. Different though. characters. Go on, explain. So, so, so I turned up as John Travolta out of Greece. He turns up as John Travolta out of Saturday Night Fever. But, we hadn't spoken there, about it or anything. But there was a story behind that because it was, was it like a musical theme or something like that? When, or, or movies? It was, like yeah, that. It was and, yeah. And right up until the night before our Christmas do, I've not sorted my outfit out. So I'm at home in bed. I've said to my wife, Karen, I said, look, I'm not going to go. I haven't got an outfit sorted like that. And she said, well what about going as John Travolta? And I went, no, no, no. Matt's going as that already. T-Bird's out of Greece. And she went, no, no, I meant John Travolta out of Saturday Night Fever. And I said, where am I going to get a white suit less than 24 out hours before? special cupboard. And, and, and she said, my dad's got one in the loft. <laughs> and it was one of my father-in-law's suits that was actually his. That put on it had massive flares, three-piece suit. <laughs> and I wore that with like a medallion type thing. And I, actually, I think wandering through town i don't think the weather was particularly great and um we were almost wandering around town from location to location and got pretty wet and i think i went down with the flu actually oh, did sort you? of almost having a, have a shirt hairy unbuttoned almost to the <laughs> so yeah it didn't, didn't go down well for me but yeah we did go as the same character one year which was pretty bizarre i'm assuming it's a it, time it, of year you look forward to though matt i mean you, you all can relax a little bit and you're just on a night out a couple of guys yeah good, i good mean fun. it was it was easier it was easier to do it back then uh we used to we used to find a place and just hire it out for ourselves as so we used to start at lunchtime have a bit of grub a load of drinks and then when it kind of got to late on in the evening then everyone would just kind of wander off into town and and then go and 
mingle with everyone. McCluskey's was it a McCluskey's night or um, not? So Icon much. Diva. Uh, no, Icon Diva wasn't around square back then. They? Yeah. No, must have been no, in the square balloon. Uh, don't think so. No, well, I mean I have been in the. Oh, you've I been did, everywhere. I did go in the square balloon <laughs> quite a bit, but back then it was um, New York, New Yorks and. Franny Top rank. and down the pier, wasn't it? <laughs> the pier? Down yeah, the pier yeah. where Franny You're talking wife. way back. That's a long time back, back now, back, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly, that's back, yeah. back. I mean, talking <laughs> when we were young lads, really. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, is a, it is a different world today. It was you, always you a strange one for me. You can't get away with today what we got away with. A strange one for me being the sober one as well, not drinking. Oh, of course, yeah. You and know, I, so and that was kind of about you the probably only time remember of year I did more drink. of it than Matt does. <laughs> yeah. But I, was, I wasn't really a drinker either. I mean, I used to, I used to drink like once or twice a year. Really? Oh, was yeah, it Malibu? Absolutely. Has yeah, it always I, been Malibu, though? It, all, it has. Always. Yeah, when I did drink, it was always Malibu. But, yeah, back then, I I very rarely got drunk in a year. Yeah, once or twice, I'd have a few too many. That's about Christmas it. Was the would time. there be a forfeit, Calvin? Would there Christmas be a forfeit for a Malibu normal. drinker nowadays, or is that acceptable? I think it's very much acceptable nowadays. I can't see... Um, I, I, I wouldn't even be able to tell you now. Uh, when you're out in a group, who's drinking, who's not drinking? You know, like, back in the day, it was obvious it was a... You know, ten pints of lager, and and that that was it. Um, now, you, you, someone is standing there having, having lemonade, a cocktail, and, and <laughs> yeah, I've seen, I've seen someone even out drinking a cup of tea. I was hmm. what? Yeah, yeah, on a night out. Yeah, is that, so, is that because they're I've aware? Seen, <laughs> I've seen it with my own eyes. A cup of tea. You got to name yeah. names? I would never name Ingsy. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> is that because, with all due respect. They're very professional nowadays. They're very aware of recovery times and not getting drunk. Or is it because of the social media? Can't get away with it. Don't no, want to risk it. Definitely first choice, I think. Yeah. I think definitely the game is as it is. Um, you know, so high speed, high pace. Physically, we're much more aware of bodies, what the effects are you know, with alcohol and everything else. You know, you, you can go out and eat a heavy meal now and be like, not feel up for training, which obviously would have killed Matt, but... <laughs> it's, uh, it, I mean, that was you a necessity look, you looked at my stomach. You looked ne- at my necessity <laughs> in my day. Can't so train on an empty stomach. That's about with you. No, but it's um, yeah, the awareness and and the understanding. Um, you know, I think I think you could probably take a, a player now, drop him back twenty years, and he could be the fitness coach. They've got that much information. I think mm. I think they're they're yeah. so clued up on and all the physical side. We did, we did a, a nutrition episode, didn't we? And we I did. was really shocked at the fact that, you know, the, the athletes, the, the, the footballers are so in tune with their bodies nowadays, whether it's a plant-based diet or whatever it is, it, it's almost become very fashionable to be super fit. Yeah. And it, it helps with the, the facilities at the training ground as well, doesn't it? The, yeah. yeah the, the lunches that are put on there, the food is... The food just, is fantastic. It, yeah. It's, better than weddings I've been to it, it really is <laughs> <laughs> the, you know, I'm trying to think what I had today I had some halloumi cheese which were grilled for me and, and I think there was a, the pasta station was running I, th- I think it was a stir fry or something today so it, it's um, it really has moved on and you know rightly so it's it's 100% the, for the for the sport it's, it's fantastic um, and certainly you know players know about sleep their, their sleep patterns and what they need and for feeling right going into games um, you know, I was always you know, something that you worked out with experience when you were, you must say, younger. If that makes sense. When I was playing, it was kind of I kind of felt that if I if I had a really really good night's sleep on a Thursday, I felt tired on a Friday, which meant I felt very good on the Saturday. So I'd purposely go to bed earlier on a Thursday night, uh, okay, to sleep well, so that on the Friday I'd be a bit like you know you got them just got out of, got out of bed eyes, and then on Saturday I used to feel as fresh as a daisy. Not, not every week, obviously. But No, now the professional boys are now, Kelvin. Is there a desire to say, oh, Christmas do, we've got to have a Christmas do or got to go out? And I think, um, you know, the um, the foreign influence in the game now, it's it's not seen or, or deemed as a tradition, mm. um, whereas mm. we were traditionally, it was, you know, planned from sort of September time, what games would work, at, you know, yeah. certain times when you're going to get that when you optimum can, yeah you've got the biggest gap in between the two games to be had yeah. Yeah, maybe yeah. we'd be able to sneak two days off there if we, if and we it get a result you here got, and, and speak to the manager you've got a replay in a cup game as well we used to kill the Christmas party yeah there. yeah, that's <laughs> happened a couple of times yeah yeah. so it's um, I think uh, that's definitely had an effect um, although you know Currently and previous managers, you know, they they understand how it is. I just I don't think there's the the same hunger and desire to, mm. you know, get all the lads out as they used to be. That's mm. for sure. 
And you certainly probably not best to do it whilst sat in the bottom three either, is it? Where we are currently, obviously, it's it's very difficult. You know, it's um, but it, it doesn't just affect the Christmas do. You know, it affects. Yeah, you know, everything. Everything. Mm. Does that make a difference, though, where, where we're sat in the table, you sort of say, listen, guys, you can't be seen to be going out having a good time because these fans are paying their hard-earned cash every week to watch you, and at the moment, it's, it's not good enough. So I think, does it... You know, I think it goes a step further. I think the, the players themselves, you know, they don't need telling. Um, you know, I think that when... It's even after a defeat on a Saturday night. How many times do you then get home and think, the lads are all about going out tonight, but I don't fancy it, you know? And I think it's... Um, it's right to certainly feel that way, but also, you know, the flip side is we came from an era that you understood what that gave you. It did give you something else. You know, it was a, a togetherness, um, you know, a story to tell on a Monday morning when you're all back in. Now, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not saying that's what uh, players should be doing now, but it, they, I do feel that they, there is something in that Environment. The bonding type situation, that, isn't mm, it? Yeah. That you can't, so you can't get anywhere else, or it's just not the same as it is when you know you, you've seen someone maybe make a fool of himself, and you're looking after him a little bit more than you would normally, and mm. you know it builds builds relationships and builds uh, you know, like I say, something to have in common. Um, and there's certainly other ways of doing it, but there's something about that that I think the modern day player uh, won't and doesn't experience. Talk us through some of the fancy dress outfits then, because I've seen some over the years, and there's a lot of effort goes into it, which is a good thing, because you say, come Monday morning, you can have a laugh about it, you can compare who was dressed as what, who was the best John Travolta, whatever it might be. What's, what's the best outfits you've seen? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we did too many uh, in my era here. Um, back in my Wimbledon days, there was certainly a, a few big efforts. Um, we used to do the Secret Santa, um, and which uh, we used to, which we used to do. Actually, we'd always be in Christmas Eve whenever it was obviously training schedule, training schedules, um, and we would do it uh, first thing in the, in in the morning when we'd get in, have a quick bit of breakfast, and then get on with Secret Santa and whatever. If you got given anything, the rules were: if you got given anything in Secret Santa that you could wear, you had to wear for the warm up. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I unwrapped a. Uh, uh, an outfit that can only be described, I suppose, as a, as a dirty old man outfit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I managed to get through the full uh, full warm up in in um, in training in that. And that comes a little bit back to the social media side. It was one of the lads actually put it on their their social media, which I wasn't too pleased about. But uh, you it um, you know again from the early days, it, it was all part of that development where you're you're seeing what. You know, is that right or is what that not right? Is, yeah, yeah, can, yeah. Can that, how's that going to be seen? How's that going to make me be seen? Um, so yeah, there were some some interesting bits there, and I think, uh, I think Gaston Ramirez got a, uh, I think it was a Lazio shirt uh, one year, and a, I think he got a um, poster. I think one of, the, one of the lads spent a long time making a poster for him. Um, I don't want to be too harsh. He's a good lad, Gaston. <laughs> but um, let, let's say we didn't really get our value for money for him. And don't worry about it. We've heard this story. I think I think Ricky told us this. Was it a cut down price? It was a yeah, cut yeah, down yeah. price. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, we've heard this mention. story. Yeah. No, no, so no, I should watch more of these. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, can, you can be as ruthless <laughs> as you want. Oh, okay. Don't yeah. worry, Ricky even swears, so you're all right. <laughs> did you Did you used to like the Christmas period? Uh, the amount of games that we used to play over Christmas. Game wise, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, can't help. I still do. I think um, the the only one I struggle with is that that twenty eighth. You know, the the Boxing the Day between. game. I, I love the Boxing Day game. It's tradition, obviously, in our football, and yeah. also from a family's point of view, and and even as my job, you know, the, the family knew we got up on Christmas morning. I'd go to training, either come back if we were at home or disappear and mm. it's tough though i mean for, for most people with a regular nine to five they, they mm. can't wait for time off at christmas i mean i know obviously footballers are paid handsomely and it's a career they choose to do but from an outsider i think it is quite tough over christmas i mean it's good for the club if you put together a good string of results you can move yeah. up the table but it's demanding to be away from the families yeah it, it is but i don't, I don't know it's, it's one of those things we we just accepted as that's what it was and you kind of um you, you took enjoyment out of it and as you say if you if you got two or three wins together all of a sudden you're bouncing up the league and mm -hmm. it's just, it can be a really successful period and it can really change a season for you so 
Um, I think as well, you know, you, you talk about the, the being rewarded handsomely. It's all you almost feel like um, uh, when I used to pull off my drive and drive into work on that day. It was it was a sacrifice I was willing to to pay. It was almost like yeah, you know, I'm driving a nice car and I'm doing a job I absolutely love. Yeah. Okay, this is one day I, that yeah. um, I remember finding a, a little bit of a tough transition when. We would always be in Christmas morning, wouldn't we? So yep. th that's almost like a, a, a given, isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. you'd, you'd be in, everyone's pretty much there to get in, do what you need to do, and then almost get back to your families again. And then you'd have Christmas night at home, quite often where it's localised the game, so you'd still be sort of at your home with your family during Christmas day, Christmas night, and then reporting for the Boxing Day game, wherever that may be. But then a little bit different obviously if you're away you've got to go and travel but even for some home games I think it started coming in one or two of the managers almost would want to take us into a hotel on Christmas night even when we're at home and I think mm. one of the hotels was a mile down the road from where I lived on a couple of years so knowing that my family were almost like enjoying Christmas day yes we had to prepare for the following day I get it but the difference between sleeping in a hotel bed a mile away from my own bed was quite a difficult one for me at the time, I did remember. It, did it never give you the hunger, though? I mean, I know it's a different sport, but I used to traditionally train every Christmas day, right? There's, there's no way physically I had to do that or I'd gain anything. But psychologically, I knew in the summer when I lined up, I looked around, I thought, there's no way you train Christmas day. I've sacrificed more than you. So it made me kind of almost desire it more than them or think I've given it more than you have. Did you not then, by being away from the families and maybe the slight amount of guilt that they came with, not then on that Boxing Day game, put a right shift in, think, well, I've sacrificed a lot. I'm going to be. I know your opponents may feel the same, but did it not give you the God-given right then to give it a bit extra? Um, no, not really. No? Just part of the job. Yeah, I mean, mm. it was. It, uh, I, I mean, I can only remember. I think I only went once away from home on Christmas Day night if you know what I mean, on December the 25th um, for a home game. Only took, uh, Dave Merrington took us down to <coughs> Fairham. I think we stayed at the hotel down in Fairham. And um, and I didn't agree with it. And I wasn't happy about it. And um, I checked into my room and about an hour after I checked out and got in my car and drove home. And I I didn't stay in the hotel that night. Did, drove drove did back the next out? morning. Did he find out? He probably knows, but he didn't say anything. We'll ask him if he comes on one of these podcasts. Because it was Matt. <laughs> if I'd done it, I probably would have been fine. But yeah. if Matt did it, he was yeah. all right. You're, fine. <laughs> you're, on the you're on the bench. <laughs> yeah. Why am I subbed? You or I why. probably might not have been up for selection, to be fair. <laughs> there was normally gathering a few bookings by that stage of the season. Not, not intentionally. I was going to ask you that, because be a lot of players you hear on TV, they do, oh, well done. You know, you've got your fourth yellow or whatever it might be. Gives you a bit of time. Do, do you know of players who actually, you don't have to name them, but do you know of players who would purposely do that? I wouldn't be, I, I can't think of an obvious name unless Matt can, but I'm sure there were players out there that you. looked at no, it and thought, I'm on, I'm on four bookings. If I time a booking right, I might potentially get Boxing Day off or... New Year's um, Eve off. I remember getting New sent Day. off, I think, on my, my birthday, I think it was. Or in between... <laughs> Christmas and New Year at home, we had a home game. And, you know, just that whole being sent off is just a, a bad thing anyway. But, you know, around that Christmas time and knowing that it's such an important time where you can pick up a lot of points potentially and the importance of a lot of games in a small space of time and almost that element of a sacrifice from a family perspective, you know, just getting sent off and losing just, you know, can really leave you on a bit of a downer. Mm. And Kelvin, in terms of now on the coaching staff, how, how I know the players clearly know how important it is, but how aware are you all of if you have a good run over Christmas, you can make a massive difference getting out of trouble and, and actually being quite comfortable? I think um, I think any period of time where you're you're looking at that amount of games that closely together, it's, it's the first thing you think. Um, and certainly, you know, the position that we find ourselves in at the moment, um, you know, it's even more so. Um, so I think the, you know the answer to that is yes. You know there is 100% um, that focus, and I think last year, uh, obviously the first year that we that Ralph was with us, um, there, I think we had Man City between two games, and I think you, there was an obvious feeling within the squad like, pff, well, we know Man City is going to be tough. Um, the two games either side, we've got more of a chance of taking points from. I'm not saying that Man City aren't um, aren't beatable, but obviously had a fantastic season last season, and you know we weren't in a particularly good run at the time. So I certainly think from that respect, you can be quite strategic with your team selection as well, and what players or or team you're going to select 
to perform in in different fixtures and I think that's something as well that comes into play when you know your squad isn't massive and 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 you know the depth isn't the same as as clubs like Man City and Tottenham and, and these guys that you, you can be quite strategic in 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 what you do over that period depending on what what fixtures you've got so in terms of getting the players ready and also getting the chance to recover it's such a physically demanding period of time over Christmas with lots of games close to each other what what is a training procedure or the outlook when you've got lots of games close um we obviously we've got uh, the, the the coaching staff so the fitness coaching staff um which are the snc's the strength and conditioning team they, they they've got all the figures that uh, a the optimum figures what we need to run at during games um and we'd look at that from a coaching staff in terms of um certain amount of outputs from certain players um are his norm if you like is he capable of doing those performances and putting that level of physical effort in for four games and between how long between each game? And obviously, it stands to reason that we, we play 26th, 28th New Year's Day. It's going to be very difficult for you know someone, I won't name any names, but a <laughs> member of our team to be able to be as optimum for three games consecutively. Um, so what we'd do certainly leading into the game uh, into that period we wouldn't train um, f physically train to the level uh, that maybe we would do the week before so we're kind of getting that hard work in beforehand to give them that base fitness to then give them the best opportunity to be able to cover the distance cover the uh, the training zones and the sorry the, the the game zones for them to be able to achieve that that, that level of performance it's so scientific you know i'm assuming in your day you might go to the gaffer and say i'm feeling a bit tired you know my legs are a bit heavy still can i have a bit more rest yeah, but you know everything on every player don't you how many minutes they've played what injuries they've had and their recovery rate everything yeah the the kind of it's risk reward and at the end of the day the, the buck still stops with the manager and, and the coaching staff and you know a conversation like that is still very valid because you know it's numbers on an iPad and you know look at what Franny's done sort of off the field since he stopped playing you would think that that's just unachievable and I think the human body can do things you know that, that we don't know we can do uh, until you see yeah. Fran do what he, mm. the, the kind of things he's done but I think um, it's still good to have an idea and good to have a plan and, yeah. and the bottom line is is that I think the player, you know, we had a situation today in training. The physio department felt that a player wasn't really was a, a risk to train today. The players, I want to train, I really need to train. You know, we got a big game at the weekend. And he trained. So, you know, they're, they're just uh, recommendations and it's up to the manager, the coach staff and the players to take responsibility on, on risk reward. If I remember uh, what one Christmas, I think, Glenn Hoddle was manager and I'd been injured for quite a bit of the first part of the season and I came back into the team for a game on Boxing Day uh, I think we played Man City I can't remember who it was so we played Boxing Day two days later we go and play at Watford and he picks me in the starting team again of course I, I want to play but I've been out a while I've played 48 hours earlier I, f I felt a bit tired and I started the game and after about 25 minutes completely ripped my hamstring yeah, and I was out for seven weeks. So with hindsight like there then, Matt, should you have gone to him and said, listen, yeah. I want to play, but please, I, I, I don't think I, I can. Should have, I should have said, I don't think I can play two games in three days, given what's gone on the, the pre... I mean, under normal circumstances, if I'd been fit the whole thing, I want to play every game. But given that I had been injured for that lead up to that period, to then go and play two games in three days... I can remember really specifically in certain games, mate, as well, that where, especially if you've been part of maybe the starting lineup over the short space of times, Boxing Day, the 28th maybe, if you're in the, the lineup for New Year's Day or the second, whatever it might be, like really losing that, that edge to your game. Yeah. Specifically remember running around in games thinking, don't, you know, fatigue is kicking in now. But that must I be hard, really Franny, for you to admit that and to say, listen, I'm not 100%. You could play, play X, Y, and Z. They're better than me because I'm a little bit tired. Because surely, as a professional, even just as a young boy who loves playing football, you want to be out there every game. Oh, for mm. sure. But then there's an element of, like, you're thinking, well, my teammates must be feeling like this or the lads that maybe played a similar amount of and game time. And the players I'm playing against. And, and quite often, in, in, again, in our time, there probably wasn't the squad depth of... Mm. You know, that's sort true. of quality and, and, and sort of numbers also within the, the squad. Opponents were in the same position. Exactly. They? Yeah, and that's how you thought yeah. about it. You thought, well, I'm tired, so they've got to be the, feeling tired as well. Yeah. Get on with it. Yeah. yeah. So, Matt, Fran, uh, in terms of obviously your playing days are finished, 
Do you indulge a little bit more over Christmas now? Bearing in mind, I saw you out Saturday night, so tell the truth. Um, yeah, we had our uh, ex-players Christmas night out. Um, so Did yeah, we? We were able to. Yeah, we, you don't care. You're right, I wasn't there. You don't, you you, you don't no. want to be in the WhatsApp groups, so you don't get in. Yeah, I couldn't deal with a WhatsApp group. <laughs> 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 Touched a couple of bones. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So we, uh, yeah, about 15 of us, I think it was in the end, uh, had a little night out Saturday, uh, a couple of drinks, a few Malibu and Cokes. A um, couple of places, and then uh, ended up in the casino. Just like the old days, five thirty in the morning. <laughs> what, what, what is great now, from a if you like, from a beyond the playing days, is you know you don't have to you know it's never a drink personally anyway. But I guess you you may ask the guys on on the sofa, but you know at least you don't have to now be conscious of food, drink, mm. what you're particularly consuming. But it's just great to to actually still take in the games. And still watch football over the. It's just almost a bit of a tradition, you know. Sport, yeah, Christmas, absolutely. football, yeah. New Year. What was the first year like? Then the first year of retirement. When did the alarm clock go off? And oh, I've got training. No, no, you're retired now. I mean, what was that Christmas like? Uh, did you miss it? it? It was a little bit of a novelty to begin with. It, it was weird in a way. At the same time, I don't know mm. about you guys, but I, I enjoyed maybe the Christmas morning, not having to go in to do training, albeit just for the hour, two hours, whatever it might have been, and just staying purely at home with the mm. family was great but um yeah i think i went back to guernsey the first year so i hadn't had a christmas back in guernsey for donkey's years um and so i yeah i went back and had christmas which is what i'll be doing again this year and a big adjustment. I've got boxing day off i was gonna say an adjustment work for your boxing. families as well isn't it because it's not just your lives you've changed all of a sudden yeah. you're at home under the wife's feet under the kids what's dad doing it must be different for them to adjust for you to go back to civilian life if you like i, I always used to find new year's eve the hard one Christmas Day training, fine. Playing Boxing Day, great. Game in between Christmas and New Year. It was New Year's Eve that, especially if it's an away game, and in our game, again, probably a little bit different, choose the accommodation probably a bit more wisely now, Kelv, but you just rock up to a hotel, and if your room was near the, oh, yeah. the function hall of the hotel, <laughs> literally every hotel around the country is going to be having a, a, a New Year's Eve party. Round, aren't so yeah. the amount of yeah. times I remember being like still awake or trying to block out the the noise from the party down below you was was a bit tricky once or twice. And that was just Matt's room. <laughs> no, no, I wasn't. A, I wasn't a uh, New Year's Eve reveler, really. I don't think I. I don't think I drank on New Year's Eve. Ever Never massive in my Even now, it's not massive in my house. No. I don't know why that is. I, I, had, I had a drink on Christmas Day once. A few more than I should have done. Once. And did you played. Did you score know on and Boxing, I played Boxing Day? Day and, we, and we beat Man City two one. And I scored the winner. There you go. <laughs> I know. The magic yeah. of Malibu. The sports science guys are but turning, that was turning like their graves now, aren't they? <laughs> Nineteen ninety or something. That was a long time ago. Yeah, I was only a kid. So Kelvin normally sat right there would be Ricky Lambert taking up the whole sofa or just yeah half oh. the sofa. Oh. I won't oh. lie, he's not shy on a few stories about you either. So now he's not here. Do you want to uh, spill the beans? Anything you want to say about him? Um... What can I say about Rick? Um, about the state of his diet and, and, and his, his body then when he arrived at Southampton? Because he's openly talked about how he got in great shape under Poch and so forth. But how bad was he? How big was that belly? Um, <laughs> I would just say just he just didn't have any form. You know, it was it was one. He was obviously a big lad. Um, and, you know, what he did on the pitch, he, he was fantastic. And I think, you know, from the first training session... Um, Obviously, being a goalkeeper, he was a striker. I, I definitely fancied my chances, and he, I can remember, he kind of picked me off in a in a bit of a shooting session. I thought, hmm, he's got a little bit this one. He's he's decent, and then obviously you build a relationship. He's, you realise he's a great lad that um, he just wants to improve. And and certainly one thing that was very easy for him to improve was his diet. Um, I think his routine at his Bristol Rovers days was, you know, training in the morning. Um, after a McDonald's breakfast and a bucket of Kentucky on the way home. So I think he thought because it was chicken, it was it was healthy. Um, <laughs> so it's not then? <laughs> Apparently not. Ah. Apparently not. Ah, I don't know okay. what's in that recipe, but uh, ah. it, certainly, it certainly weren't working for him. But um, a good character to have around, and like you, a big character. Is that why you got on so well? Um, I don't know, really. I, I mean, I think, um, I think what... what strikes you about Ricky and, and certainly being in the dressing room with him he was a laid back guy would always follow suit um, but had a real strong compass you know on, on what was right and I think that that kind of defines people certainly in the dressing room it was you know you're a group of 
lads, um, you're a team, you'd go out socialising with each other, but there was always that there was always something with Ricky that no, that's not right, and I'm I'm not having that, and I think that's it's it's a, it's a great for any person, but it's also for someone that was as important to us as he was, you know, on the pitch, to have that off the pitch as well, um, really really helped. Um, he was he was one certainly that uh, that liked to drink and. Uh, you know, I think on a on a odd night out that we used to have back in back in the day, um, I think it was one of the promotion parties. We uh, we were coming back on the bus from Plymouth, and uh, I'd packed a couple of bottles of red wine just in case it was a successful day. Um, I got a couple of bottles of wine out of my bag, uh, sat at the back of the bus, had a couple of glasses with uh, a couple of players at the end of the at the end of the uh, back table, and. Ricky was just into the Fosters, I think it was. And uh, by the time we got back, we got dropped off in town. Uh, I think the chairman at the time had had a few drinks. I think it was Danny Butterfield that started uh, singing Viva Las Vegas. Um, <laughs> and by the end of the trip, uh, I'm really pleased to say that the, the chairman had invited me in for an eight o'clock morning meeting to discuss uh, the players' trip to Vegas. So uh, although I had a, a night to crack on with, I kept thinking I need to I need to be ready for this important meeting because I didn't want to I didn't want to <laughs> let the lads down. Um, but uh, yeah, we we got dropped off at uh, a, a local venue in town, stumbled in, um, and then I t I turned I turned back around and uh, I just watched Ricky bounce off the floor <laughs> with his <laughs> with his forehead. No, <laughs> yeah, me. he just took a dive. And uh, he, as quick as he hit the floor, he was back up. <laughs> was he <laughs> looking for a penalty or something? <laughs> I don't know. I, don't know. He, I think he just uh, so it must have rushed to his head, and uh, <laughs> obviously instantly up on his feet again, acting like nothing had happened. <laughs> and uh, from behind the bar, the uh, the physio was there, and uh, for the rest of the night, he just had two uh, stereo, um, stereo what they called, strips. Yeah, stereo strips, <laughs> sterile strips. What they called, yeah. Keeping his eye together, <laughs> and, and that was Rick. Just Brilliant. just cracked on. Next next drink, away we go. Brilliant. And what happened, Vegas? You got there. Mate Bellagio, it? Bellagio, oh, all nice. paid for. Yeah, it was uh, it was a good trip, and we even managed to invite Paul Watton back, who, who was out on loan, who was uh, also a big character in the dressing room. He came back and and helped us uh, celebrate. So uh, yeah, it was a, it was a good time. So Kelvin, a massive character around the club as a player, still there. Talk us through your sort of your role within Southampton. What you're doing now. Um, I think, well, my role is a, is a first team assistant coach, um, so I'm in with the first team every day, supporting Ralph and, and uh, obviously the first team lads. The role is to, to be around the players, support the manager, put the sessions on that he wants um, and take whatever sessions he, he requires you to take. Um, it certainly you know, keeps me busy, I'm certainly involved with, uh, you know, with the week uh, leading into games and um, you know, I think the difference is this season um, I sit upstairs. I'm I, I'm on the on the microphone, on the headphones, and communicate with the guys on the bench, uh, with Dave Watson and the the guys doing the an analyst um, on the watch, watching the game on the camera. So it's um, and I get down at half time and add things there that uh, if I a, if I feel I need to to individuals as the players and also to the manager and the coaching staff of, of sort of how I viewed the game and you know with that that sort of 15 minutes, which isn't 15 minutes by the time you get the lads in and mm -hmm. get them out the end. It's um, you know, there's certainly times in that where you don't say anything because of you know a either the manager's already seen it or someone else has mentioned it and you you just need to have that balancing act of actually this really needs to be said or actually we've got, we've got it covered so it's um, it's it's interesting it's it's you know it's it ultimately I, I, it's a position that I don't think everybody's made out to do and and potentially you know in the future it, it might be something that you know I want to feel I want to change and do something different but um, certainly where I am now I'm, I'm happy to support the manager and the, and the first team in the club as, as much as I can. Kelvin thanks so much for coming in do you mind sticking around just for a couple I'm more in. minutes we have a little yeah. quiz at the end okay. which our smarty pants normally wins but I'm not sure today because <laughs> so it's a Christmas theme. Do not involve me. You like a sing song though don't you Matt? Oh God, yeah I love a good sing song. Yeah. Well this is cool. Tone deaf but I love a good sing song. <laughs> the, the Christmas song challenge oh, okay. might be up your street. So I'm going to name a song and I'm going to start it and if you can continue the lyrics shout in and whoever thinks they can continue it can do. You don't have to sing it. I'm going to say it. So the first one <laughs> yeah. is an Elton John number. 
Step into Christmas. So when I pause, shout in if you can continue. Okay. Step into Christmas. Let's join together. We can... Watch the snow fall forever and ever. Matt Letizia. He didn't shout in, but Did we've got to give him that. That was so quick. This might be you. A bit of wham. Last Christmas. Oh, ready? Oh, Catherine. Might have a chance. Got to be quick then. Ready? Last Christmas, I gave you my heart. But the very next day, you gave it away. This, this year, year, to, to save, save you from, from tears. Oh, I'll give it so to someone special. special. <laughs> that was level. We need a stopwatch on that. I think joint <laughs> points there. Okay, next up, Frosty the Snowman. Oh, no. Frosty the Snowman was a jolly happy soul with a corncob pipe and a button nose and... Oh, no. Eyes. One word, I two words. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually two eyes made of coal. Two eyes. Uh, okay, next one. Oh, Mariah Carey, this one. All I want for Christmas oh, is you. Friend. Right. <laughs> I don't want a lot for Christmas. There is just one thing I need, and I don't care about the present. Under, Under the, the Christmas, Christmas tree. tree. Who was quick? They're both spot on. I thought Give we were doing a duo. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Shaking Stevens. Uh, uh, he's winning this all day long. Shake Merry Christmas, shaky. everyone. Time for parties and celebrations. People dancing all night long. Time for presents and exchanging kisses. Time for singing Christmas songs. The Christmas dun, 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 We're going to have a party tonight. No, don't no, say. You're right. You're right. No, don't right. No, no, you're right. Come on, you're Calvin. Right. Buzz in. Come on. This one could be you. Dean Martin. I didn't yeah. think I was in. You're I was in. Purposely Dean sitting back. Yeah, he knows oh, you're part of the quiz. I was, I was he was giving the clues and all sorts. Oh, okay. oh, sorry. No, that's why no, I you said thanks for coming and all that. No, I said if you don't mind muting me. No, I would never mute the microphone. Sit there and let the head off. Cut the blue one off. Dean Martin, let it snow. Oh, the oh, weather the outside is frightful, thing. but the fire is so delightful. There's something let inside. It snow, let it snow, let it snow, isn't no, it? No, there's, there's something, something inside, is no, it? No, no. no? Say that again, say that again. Okay. Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. There's only one place mm. to go. Da -da 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 -da. Let it snow, no. let it... What's before that? Let it snow, let it snow. No. no. No, you're sure going to kick that. yourself on this one. Yeah. And since we've got no place to go, oh, I knew it let us know. Like that. Right, wouldn't have got no. This is Wizard. I wish it could be Christmas every day. Oh, everyone <laughs> knows that song. When we're skating in, the, oh, skate. I like that one. <laughs> right. When we're skating in the park, if the snow cloud makes it dark, when you read it, it makes it yeah, harder, isn't it? You one. know, sing it. Yeah. Sing it. We I don't even chance. know it. <laughs> when we're skating in the park, <laughs> skating if the snow cloud the makes it dark, the snow cloud makes it dark. And the the rosy cheeks going to light your merry way. Correct. <laughs> you had to sing Very good. I know. I right, come on. You've all got to know this one. Talking about it. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Right. All of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names. They never let poor Rudolph... Join in the Rudolph games. Correct. Join in the reindeer games. Reindeer yeah. games, not Rudolph games, yeah. Right, Cliff um, Richard, mistletoe and wine. Christmas time, mistletoe and wine. Children singing Christian rhyme. With logs on the fire. And gifts on, on the, the tree. tree. Time to rejoice. No, I'm giving that to Kelvin. I'm giving yeah, it <laughs> that you see. I kind of right. finished what you were saying there. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's it for the pod, the Christmas special. Thank you very much to Franny and, of course, Kelvin for being here. All you've got to do is finish off this song, yeah? We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. <laughs> <Something like that. laughs> I'm going to do three. Can he? Oh, for Please God's sake, you the tone made on. it sound like there was another one coming. Okay, okay, okay. Was, we wish you a Merry oh, Christmas. Christmas. Right. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. And, and a Happy New Year.